Hey, this is Larissa from Beekeeping Made Simple, and this video is about feeding your bees in the spring. When to feed, what to feed, how to make the feed, when to take the feed out, all that fun stuff. Now, feeding your bees in the spring is for a specific reason, and that is to encourage the bees to grow and to build so that they increase their population, they have the resources to build combs so that the queen has somewhere to lay, and the hive grows. When the hive is nice and big and strong in the late spring, then it is ready to gather lots of honey and come the summertime. When you pick up your nuke or package, um, the nuke is what'll be like three or five frames of bees with a queen laying, walking around, honey, brood um, in a box. Or you'll have a package of bees which will be like um, just a screen box with literally just thousands of bees inside with a queen in a cage in the center. Now, if you buy your nuke, your nuke is going to come with one or two frames of honey. Um, and that should be enough to get the bees through for the next couple of weeks. If you have a package of bees, that package should have a can inside it. And there will be holes poked in the bottom of that can. And there will be sh sugar syrup inside this can. So it's dripping out. So no matter what, when you first get your bees, whether a nuke or a package, they should come with food already. So you do not need to worry to have this food ready and waiting when your bees are there. But um, it's a good thing to make Mm, say a week or so in once you see that maybe they are going to need some supplements. Um, so this isn't something you need to make now but something that you should have the ingredients for and the directions for so that you can do it later. Um, so when you need to feed is when it is over 50 55 degrees Fahrenheit the bees are leaving the hive it is warm enough that they are breaking the cluster and leaving to go in search of food. Now you can put a feeder into the hive and that feeder will have syrup in it and you can also put pollen in the hive and this will help the bees grow faster. Especially if you are in a state that has a long cold winter, you're really going to want to help the bees come the early mid spring um, so that they can build up as fast as possible. So for one we have feeders. I'm going to give you a tip here. You can make a feeder, you can buy a feeder. There are cheap feeders and there are good feeders. Do not make your own feeder. <laughs> you can make your own feeder, but don't make a feeder that is, you'll see on blogs and stuff, make your own feeder. It's just a jar. You poke some holes in the lid, hang it upside down, put syrup inside, put this inside your beehive. Don't do this. So many students have come to me because the feeder was just constantly dripping. It was dripping syrup onto the bees, which maybe the next day is so cold that they cluster up again and kill the bees. Even if it doesn't kill the bees, there's a good chance you're going to have some syrup pooling up on the floor of your beehive. Um, so, so don't do it. Another feeder that I made the mistake of doing when I was first getting started was a plastic Ziploc bag. You fill it up with syrup, poke a couple holes in there, lay it on the top bars in the hive, makes it sound super easy. Drips like crazy inside the hive can do the same thing, C can kill the hive or just like seriously cause damage. So um, I don't recommend making a feeder. If you need one in a pinch, get a shallow dish, put a whole bunch of rocks in there, um, you know, like a shallow, like inch, inch and a half deep, flat bottom Tupperware dish. And you can fill that up with syrup or honey, and you can put that um, inside your hive. Now, the way feeders work is you have your uppermost box, which is probably your hive is just one box. And you're going to have your uppermost box. This box is going to have frames in it. And you are going to stick your feeder on top of the frames. If you have a um, inner cover, you can put that inner cover on first and then put that on top of your inner cover. Um, you do not need a telescoping inner cover. The bees will not be going up inside. Um, but if you have it, you know, you can use it. Um, now, what I recommend doing is buying a feeder. Uh, they have feeders that look like they are the shape of a frame, but they're just plastic 
and a big hole inside you just pour the syrup in there and you put some sticks and stuff so that they have something to land on do not get this feeder it's super cheap it's like ten dollars it's the cheapest feeder you're gonna find and the bees drown in those things they just drown in them yeah you have some sticks in there but it's dark in the hive and they just drown in them so get a nice feeder that you find online and usually you're putting it up above the bees and then you're putting an empty box around it and putting it inside each individual hive not having a feeder that's outside that lots of bees go to because that can cause a, a robbing frenzy that can cause um, attracting bees and wasps not just your cute little honeybees but all kinds of insects that like sugar which there's a lot of them are going to be going and now they are aware that this feeder is also near beehives and there are certain kinds of wasps that can destroy a beehive so don't um put your hives on the radar of these wasps and let them know that your hives exist by having this giant food source nearby and put the feeders inside the hive now how you make this feed so first you're going to want your sugar syrup and that's the one that's most important you just want you know a heat source i would do this inside i just have my burner out here for to show you but i would do this inside and you just get a big pot and you want to make a one-to-one -one ratio so that is equal parts water to sugar now your sugar water ratio can be um by weight or by volume which means that you can get a little scale um, those little kitchen scales are super convenient when you're a beekeeper for a variety of things and you can weigh it out in a container or you can just literally fill this up two cups of water pour it in bring it to a boil now for one or two hives i would recommend doing like say a quart or two of water um i think a gallon is a little excessive uh hopefully your bees are in an area where there's going to be food and they're not going to be starving because um, then you have a whole nother problem than needing to make more syrup so you know however much you want to do four cups eight cups of water plus the same amount of sugar and we are doing just plain white powdered sugar i mean not powdered sugar just plain white granulated sugar you do not want brown sugar you do not want corn syrup you do not want to use honey from someone else's hives um and it's probably okay but they say it's not good to feed honey to other bees you are probably killing all of any microbes that might be in there that can harm the bees but just use plain white powdered sugar plain white sugar powdered sugar powdered sugar can have cornstarch in it so you want to stay away from powdered sugar when making a feed because that is really bad for the bees digestive system so plain white granulated sugar and you're just going to bring the water to a boil once it's boiling turn the heat off and you're going to slowly stir in the sugar in that one to one ratio by weight or volume whichever one you want and just keep on stirring until it is fully dissolved once it's fully dissolved set it aside and let it cool and if you're having trouble getting it to dissolve turn the heat up a little bit and keep on stirring i mean you're not going to be harming the sugar or killing anything beneficial in there <laughs> by putting it on the heat um, so you can keep it on a low heat just you know don't have it boiling while you're stirring in the sugar you don't want to burn the sugar and just keep that going until it's dissolved then let it cool once it's cool then you want a honeybee healthy this is called pro health um, there are a couple different brands uh, like honeybee healthy is the one that i'm used to but this is like the day dance version of it and this is essential oils that not only help stimulate the bees but it just helps the bees digest the white sugar because bees aren't meant to be eating white sugar it's not good for their digestive system so anytime you're going to be feeding them that sugar it's always good to have um, this to help them digest it but you want to make sure you're adding this once it is cool so once it's cool you can add this in you want to just follow the directions on the back for what the ratio should be and stir that up then you can just put it in a plain glass jar you know here i have an empty juice jar and stir that up and put it in the jar and keep it in the refrigerator 
Um, so the sugar syrup actually isn't even just good for feeding the bees, but when you are getting your package, if you are purchasing a package, it's always good to just spray the package with a uh, sugar syrup before you open it up and dump them into the hive. It kind of just distracts them. They're now covered in sugar, so they're licking themselves and each other and not as, you know, um, concerned with like what you are doing to them. Now, so that's the feed you want to give them and you put it in, you know, um, as soon as you see that that can is getting low. And if it's just a nuke, you can put that feeder in as soon as you put the bees in the hive. The when you want to take them out is when, um, the bees don't need it anymore. Either they're not going to it, um, you haven't had to refill it in a while, it's still pretty high, um, or when you are adding your honey super on, if the bees have built out two brood boxes and now you're adding a honey super on, they don't need the feed. Not only that, but you don't want them eating sugar syrup because that makes for really disgusting honey and it will make your honey taste gross. You want them to be making honey from the flowers that they're finding. Um, if you have just a small nuke or a hive that's really struggling, I mean, you can potentially feed them for as long as necessary until they bounce back. It's not like there's a specific month or day of the year that, you know, is official take out sugar syrup from your beehive day, uh, no matter where in the country you live. Now, if you are in a warm weather climate, you don't need any syrup at all. There should be enough flowers blooming that is it's probably over 60 degrees Fahrenheit and in the daytime. And there should be flowers blooming that they can get their own food. You can give them some syrup if you like to just help uh, get them up and running a little bit faster. But you can probably take it out within the next like four weeks. And if you are finding that the bees are eating a ton of syrup and um, not building a ton and bringing in much pollen, then that's a sign that your bees are not in a very good area. And either there's a lot of other bees in your area or there's not enough food for them. And you should look into other places to put your bees or hope that a big nectar season comes at some point in the year to compensate for the low nectar season that they're in right now. Now, the second food you're going to give them is pollen. You don't have to give them pollen. In Pennsylvania, I fed my bees pollen sometimes, but not all the time. If your bees are from the previous year, you probably still have pollen in your hive. And something to remember is when you start to see a ton of pollen, cut some out and put it in the freezer and store it for next year so that you can give them real bee pollen as opposed to the fake stuff. Now, you will find recipes to make pollen patties. I've always just bought them and they're pretty cheap. And while you're buying all your other beekeeping stuff, you can add that to the list. And you just want to give them a tiny little amount, especially if you are in a warm climate. Um, small hive beetle will just um, start to lay their eggs and it can be a place that small hive beetle larvae start to grow. So just give them a, a teeny little bit, you know, cut off like a one inch strip and put that on top and see if they go to it, see if they like it, if they're ignoring it, if it's attracting things other than bees and keep an eye on it and take it out if necessary. Hopefully the bees are going and gathering their own pollen. And you know, it's an important time to be hanging out by your hive when you first install it and just looking and seeing what the bees are doing without even opening the hive. But looking at the bees when they're coming back, how active are they? Um, and do you see pollen, those little yellow, orange colored balls stuck to the hairs on their back legs? If you're not really seeing pollen, then that's not good because either you have you do not have a queen that is laying lots of eggs or they're struggling to find food for the baby bees. And I just want to stress on this whole feeding issue, don't sweat it. <laughs> I know you'll find like people that'll be, <laughs> sorry, I have a, getting over a little bit of a cold, people that'll be just very specific about things, um, at how to measure this sugar syrup ratio and when to put the feed in, when to take it out, whether you should be feeding or not. Just do your best, <laughs> do your best. Cause, because 
you're there to help the bees. You're not there to do everything for them. They are not a newborn baby. They are fully capable of taking care of themselves. However, as a beekeeper, we are putting them into our designed boxes into an area that's convenient for us. And so we try to help them as much as possible. Thanks for watching. Check out our online beekeeping class, Beekeeping for Beginners at our website, beekeepingmadesimple.com. Use the promo code below for an extra 35% off. And we also have two free resources for you. We have a getting started guide that has all the steps to getting started as well as your equipment checklist. We have an identification guide. Oh, and we have a third one. We also have our beehive inspection checklist. So check them all out and give us a thumbs up if you appreciated this video.